everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Fside DFS Fantasy Baseball Picks. I'm your host, Meg Ruhr, 31. Hope you had a great weekend. Eight game slate on Monday. It's supposed to be a nine game slate, but um, the Detroit and I forget who else they were playing. It was got rained out early in the season. So now this makeup double header. So DK took it off and FanDuel took it off of the slate. So still have eight games here. Uh, just a programming note I'll be doing the videos on Tuesday and Wednesday. McKinley is on uh, or Monday. Today is Monday. The next couple of days I'll be on um, vacation also, and McKinley is, but I will be doing it on my iPad. So you'll be able to hear me. You'll see the um, content as usual. You just won't be able to see me, which for some of you, that's probably not a bad thing. So, anyways, uh, let's just jump into this late here. Uh, I really like a lot of the hitting situations. I don't really like any more than probably the top four pitchers here. But, um, you know, as we go through this late, we'll talk about it here to try to figure out what we're going to do. So first game is Colorado and uh, the Nationals. Uh, wind blowing out five miles per hour, 80 degrees. Looks like a 50% chance of rain up until first pitch, but then it drops off drastically. So late start, if anything, they should get the game in no problem whatsoever. Uh, <clears throat> we are not sure who's pitching for Colorado. I've seen 100,000 different names on 100,000 different sites, but none of them are good. So I don't think, you know, we want to just have fade Colorado, whatever situation is, we don't want to play them. Washington's actually been pretty hot recently offensively. Corbin on the other side, I think is definitely in play here in the medium range. Colorado has been bad this season. They've been bad against um, outside of Coors. Cron and Brian have been banged up. So you, you really don't have much left in this lineup. So I uh, definitely like Corbin here. Colorado bats, I think they're definitely in play in the cheap category. If you don't trust Corbin, like if whatever righties are in there, just like just go ahead and stack them up. I wouldn't really take them as one-offs. Uh, and um, Washington bats just absolutely have been a fan, been playing them a lot recently, played them yesterday, played them the day before where they put up 10 runs, and it just has been very, very profitable. So, um, you know, just – Top five or mix in, you know, Smith or Dickerson if you want to save some money. Um, Garcia, call with a wraparound stack. Um, you know, just so many different ways to go here. Pick your favorite four to five and fill them in, or pick your favorite top three and fill them in as um, your value stack there. Kansas City Royals and the Cleveland Guardians, we have Yarborough and Allen. I think both pitchers are in play here. I don't love Yarborough, but you don't really have anybody – that's cheap. So in Cleveland, they'll strike out, but they don't have a ton of power. So if you can just eat some innings at 5.8K, uh, hopefully you can pay off his price tag and he'll be um, okay. That's more of a GPP play to open up salary for bats. It is not a cash play. Allen on the other side, I think you can play him cash GPP. I think definitely against this Kansas City team. Uh, Bat-wise, Kansas City would just be a leverage stack because I think Allen will have some ownership. And Cleveland um, is definitely, besides J-Rom, they're pretty cheap here against Yarborough. So I'd probably maybe skip Quan lefty and lefty, but Rosario, um, Bell here, even I mean, Naylor's better against righties. But still, I, th I think you know, Fry's a really cheap catcher, usually hit in the middle of the order. 2-3 here has some power, so... Uh, definitely um, some decent plays on, on Cleveland to uh, fill in your lineup for cheap. And I wouldn't take them as a primary stack in cash, but in a GPP, that's fine. Seattle, Minnesota, this looks like a decent pitching matchup. Probably the top two pitchers on the slate here, or two of the top three, Castillo and Maeda. Uh, both offenses have strikeouts in them. Both offenses can put things together, but they haven't consistently. They've been dealing with injuries and, and things like that. So, um, I like Darvish better than both of them, especially on DK where you get the nice little discount, but um, on him over Castillo, but Castillo and Maeda definitely in play. Bat-wise, they'd just be leverage stacks, uh, at least you know both of them dealing with injuries. Uh, Seattle has lost um, Clinic, who kicked the cooler if he missed it over the weekend and broke his foot, so he's going to be out for a while. And then... Minnesota's starting to get some of the people back like Farmer, but it's just, it's just definitely still some strikeouts in this team. And, you know, Buxton, you know, every so often you can hit two home runs, but then just kind of like cool, cool, cools off. So really no consistency here and, and really not that scary. Plus the wind's blowing in at like five miles per hour. So it's not like it's a great 80 some degrees, but um, 
It's not a great hitter's park anyway. So pitchers it is. And if you want to be contrarian, take the uh, bats and stacks. Uh, Cincinnati and Milwaukee, nine total here. So this would be a really good offensive game. Two not really good pitchers. Ashcraft, who really can't strike anybody out. It's uh, not a great pitcher. And Ray on the other side. I think the cheap range, I know it's Cincinnati. But um, I, I think in a GPP, if you're trying to save salary here, Yarbrough would be your only options really on this slate because everybody else is even worse. So Cincinnati, obviously, is probably top GPP stack here. They have potential. Sometimes they put it together. Sometimes they haven't recently. So it all depends on what um, type of night they're having. You know, this lineup is definitely loaded. You can play them any which way, but don't be afraid to play, you know, through the bottom. Like, even if you want to start your stack and go like Vado, uh, Christian, and Connor Asian Strand, Stevenson, Benson as a wraparound, um, Den De La Cruz, or, you know, Frito, like however you want to play it. Uh, I think there's many different ways to play them also, but don't be afraid to play some of the guys in the lower line, especially Benson, like a cheap price. Um, it's got speed, got power, uh, definitely, and it's got the splits matchup. So definitely somebody to consider there. Uh, Milwaukee on the other side here. Uh, Ashcraft tends to be reverse split. So the righties are fine, just like the lefties. So, you know, the top five are are, are good there. Um, it looks like Self Relic might get in there at like 3K uh, in the middle of the lineup there. Pretty cheap. Weimer, uh, definitely like him. He's uh, shown some power this season at the bottom of the lineup. And, uh, you know, if we're talking about wraparounds, he's definitely another candidate at uh, 2 6. Um, definitely a good option for you there. So, Texas and Houston, seems like these guys, I know they're in the same division, but it seems like they play like every other week. Uh, Gray against Black. Gray's strikeouts have been way down. Houston should be getting Alvarez back. I'm not positive on that, but that's definitely going to help. So, I'm not really a huge fan of Gray. I'd actually play Patrick Corbin over him. Black on the other side might be in consideration here and maybe even a better play than Gray. Just because uh, Texas is banged up. So you're on the IL with a wrist or some kind of injury, hit by pitch, something happened. He's only supposed to miss a minimum, but he's not going to be around for a while until probably about um, next week early. And then Garcia's been banged up too. I think he's got like back spasms or something. So not, um, they've been throwing a lot of like Jankowski up higher in the lineup. And, you know, he he can be hit or miss. And, and some of these other players aren't as good. So, uh, so Belak might be in play, but then again, I think both these teams are great stacks in the GPP because Texas, there's some other guys like, oh, I was like Duran and, um, you know, maybe you can move up higher into the lineup and get a good spot. And you're not paying as much as you would be paying for a full Texas stack usually. And then uh, Houston on the other side, you know, especially if Alvarez is back could definitely be decent against Gray. Pittsburgh and San Diego. We've got Priester against Darvish. Uh, Priester not interested in, especially against this um, very powerful San Diego team with the highest total on the slate. Darvish on the other side is definitely um, probably my top pitcher. I mean, he's, he can struggle from time to time, but I think he'll have a solid item against Pittsburgh. They bring up a lot of young bats and stuff. They'll probably throw an all right-handed lineup at him because these tend to be a little bit more reverse blitzy recently. Um but still, I think, and there's still like a lot of injuries and questions in here. And the bats, they're hopefully will come together like Cincinnati, but they haven't quite yet. So um, they're definitely uh, some opportunity there for Darvish to have a really good game. Pittsburgh, I think leverage play against Darvish again. Uh, if you want to play some of these young bats, definitely, you know, it's baseball. Anything can happen. And especially if Darvish can have a lot of ownership, if Pittsburgh does for some reason crush him and go off, like we've seen like Washington and some of these other lower level teams do recently against uh, good pitching, then, you know, you're off to the races. But San Diego, definitely probably one of the top stacks on the slate. Hard to get to. Uh, you know, I, I think I like Arizona a little bit better, but I'd definitely be playing some San Diego. And again, don't be afraid to go down to the bottom of this lineup. And it's like Grissom is having, having a phenomenal season. Like Camposaro is only 2.4. Uh, Taylor Cullowy, I don't know much about him, but he's a, a 2K outfielder. So if you don't want to 
if you want to mix in some of the big boys up top and then take some of the cheaper ones to balance your stack to get some decent pitching because then you don't want to pay down for a Ray or Yarbrough or, or some of these or Corbin or some of these people that might be risky and you want to stay up there in the top four, then, you know, it definitely gives you exposure to San Diego who's got a high total. And sometimes some of these players lower in the batting order are going to be in just a good situation as some of the guys you're paying high five or six K four. Uh, next game, we have St. Louis and Arizona right against Ryan Nelson. Wayne Wright's coming back from injury. Probably going to be a pitch count. Definitely a no. Ryan Nelson is also a struggling pitcher. Even though St. Louis has been down, I still don't think he's risking. I still don't want to take, um, I don't know, maybe he can get you 10 to 12 points. So maybe in a large field gpp especially you have to look at the st louis lineup i know they've been banged up there's a lot of trade rumors about them too it's like they're gonna blow up this team and get rid of like maybe goldsmith or Renato and keep some of the younger bats so let's we'll just keep that in mind too as the trade deadline looms only a week away uh, so next um monday tuesday is gonna be a really exciting time to see what happens and bat wise Hey, St. Louis, I, th I think they're definitely playing GPP because Nelson's a bad pitcher, but a lot of their lefties have been banged up. So, and, you know, I don't know if I want to play some of the righties against them because he's been okay against the righties. So maybe more of a mini stack for me there and maybe mix in some of the bigger bats. But Arizona bullpen's been good. Arizona on the other side, I, I really like them here. Against Wainwright, uh, lefties, righties, I don't care. Um, just throw him at him. You know, he's just trying to pitch contact, really not a good pitcher anymore. So, um, and it's, it's just not working. So definitely lots of hits. And, you know, Carroll's probably one of my favorite plays on the, on the slate here. And Alex Thomas on the bottom has just been phenomenal at the bottom of the lineup. I think that's the, the, the word of the day is the wraparound stack. Look at these guys at the bottom of the lineup that are really cheap. They're in good situations. They can help you get up to that top pitching tonight. And then finally, Toronto and the Dodgers, Barrios and Grove. Barrios has been better at home than away. And even though the Dodgers are a little banged up also, uh, J.D. Uh, was out of the lineup with back spasms. So I'll have to see if he comes back and uh, who um, replace him. But definitely, you know, the Dodgers have almost a five total. So you know, Barrios is definitely could struggle there. And then on the other side of things, Michael Grove against this Blue Jays team. I, again, I just don't trust it because even though they're on the road, they can usually and don't have many lefties as righty and righty. They can still hit pretty well in the Dodger bullpen, as we talked about this season, has not been good. So uh, Toronto might be able to get if even if Grove is serviceable. Uh, getting into the bullpen might be problematic um, for the Dodgers and help the Blue Jay bats. So I think both of them go in the top stack line there. Okay. So let's look at some builds and get you on your way for your Monday to start off your week. So I'm not giving you my S an SP1 here. I'm going to give you SP2 as Magneta, and you decide if you want to go with Darvish or Castillo, or you can even go Allen and just have like two balanced pitchers up there, and it opens up some salary. So again, I say uh, Washington, Arizona is where I'm going here. Marte, you can decide if you want to take Walker or Menezes there. Uh, pay up for catcher or pay down. Like I said, Fry is a great option at 2.3, and I think there's some other great um, cheap guys there if you want to punt. Abrams or Perdermo, whichever one you want to go there. Alex Thomas and uh, Lane Thomas, take the Thomases. I'm going to let you choose if you take Carroll. And here's pretty much what your choice is going to boil down to. Even if you punt catcher and you take either one of the first basemen from the two teams to complete the stack, if you go Carroll, you're paying down and probably getting Allen a pitcher. If you pay down at outfield, then you can get up to Darvish or Castillo. So that's your choice. Build a couple lineups in, in cash and, and go to different directions. And then, you know, kind of split your money up. And if one of them hits, hope, hopefully they all, they all should have enough floor to hit. And that's the goal here in cash. But if you're looking for like a little bit more upside by kind of spreading out the different lineups and, and playing them in GPB, I had this discussion with several people over the weekend. Please, please, please. Every time you build a cash lineup and you feel good about it, always throw your cash lineup in at least a dollar GPP. Because if it goes off, the worst thing in the world is to have the number one lineup in every single double up and not in a GPP. So please just, you know, you'll be able to cover the entry fee of the GPP just by playing like a $1 
double up and if that's all you play all day if you just play one one dollar double up and one dollar gpp on the same line and you have enough floor and you hit you're at least going to break even if if not you know you can probably uh you win the two dollars you lose one dollar i mean so you know there's a dollar profit but you know that's how you usually you can really build your bankroll but it's just such a tragedy when you have a great line and it's just in cash games and you haven't played it in any gpp so just public service announcement there okay on the fan duel darvish i'm taking it as my pitcher again um yeah he can go castillo they're, they're closer in price there but um i think i like darvish's matchup just a little bit better uh walker Marte. uh i am going to fill in with milwaukee here so give me adamas um winker uh carol there and then i'm going to fill it in with um arizona and milwaukee if you want to go a different stack arizona's the primary so put your four favorite arizona ones in and then fill in with whoever you want to make the stack work so on PK for GPP. Give me Corbin there, and then I'll let you figure out who you want to pay up for for SP1 again. And then uh, give me Cleveland and give me San Diego. So I'll take a Machado, Bell or Naylor there. Um, probably go Bell because he's got his switch hitter. It's not lefty on lefty. Uh, Rosario is in a good spot there. And then uh, Soto and Grissom. And if you can get up the Tatis in outfield, that's great. It all depends again on it's the same situation. DK, you go Carroll or um, in a lower price SP1, or you go higher SP1 in a different outfielder. Same thing here. Um, you know, you can take a, a cheaper outfielder and get a better SP1, or you can uh, pay down a little bit SP1 and, and get. Um, or you might have to just punt catcher in second base, but it, it works for you. And then finally, give me my ADA for my SP1 in the GPP, and I'm going Washington, San Diego. The stack works out very well uh, on FanDuel. Um, you know, very happy with what I was able to create there. So that's what I got for you. So if you have any questions, put them in the chat below. Hit me up at Megaro31 on Twitter. If these videos help you, please, you watch the video. So that's helped us step one. But if you want to go a little bit further, uh, hit that like button, share with your friends, and uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already seen when all our videos are coming out. And if you want more information on FSI DFS, you can go into the description of the video and there's a link to our website to sign up for our packages, which are super cheap if you look at them compared to some of the other ones in the industry. So appreciate you watching. Um, go look in your contests. Again, wraparound stacks, wraparound stacks, wraparound stacks to get a little bit of value into your lineups with the bats are in good situations to try to pay up for pitching because it is very questionable beyond the top four. So Mega Row 31, um, you know how to get a hold of me if you have any questions. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.